Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to be wood turning a candle holder. Uh, you can make them in different sizes. This is a great spindle uh, uh, project as well as it shows you some aspect of joinery because we're going to be joining the base and the top. So it's a great beginner's project because uh, you can't stretch your skills a little bit. Let's get started. In this smaller candlestick I'm using a, a cherry in the size shown with a metal insert. Uh, you can drill this uh, with a hand drill but I find it easier on end grain to deal, deal with that with a uh, drill press. Uh, in terms of a cone, once you drill the hole you can either use a 60 degree cone or you can actually make one for your original uh, manufacturer uh, live, live center and that works, works well. And of course, first thing you do, we, we rough it out, turn this thing to, to a cylinder, uh, the appropriate, appropriate size. Then we drill the hole in the base. Make sure that the base uh, is, you transfer that measurement to the tenon you're going to put on the, uh, on the up, upright and give yourself uh, a little bit of room so it doesn't bottom out. Then we go ahead and turn that uh, uh, ten, and I'm using the same size hole for this smaller candlestick that I used for the top uh, for this joinery. Uh, you'll notice here I'm using a uh, three-quarter inch uh, bit, and guess what? I forgot that the hole that I actually drilled was using a seven-eighths inch bit, so it didn't fit, and I had to start over and turn another another base that you wouldn't otherwise notice here. So here's the second one, and I've got a nice snug fit. So then we're going to turn the uh, 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 shape. One of the first things uh, we're going to do with the base is we're going to mount it, because I'm not using a chuck. I'm using a face plate with a glue block on it, and we're using two, two strips of double side stick tape. One little uh, tip when you're cutting this uh, tape, pulling the end off, if you'll just kind of... Uh, slice it as I'll show here with a knife. Here I'm showing that, I, that your glue block has got to be be flat. So you take the knife and just cut a little slit and then you can slip up under that and pull it apart. Trying to separate it from the end is uh, extremely difficult but this little technique works works well as I show here. Just a tiny little slice. And then we bring up the tailstock support. Uh, the tip of the cone goes in the little hole left by the Forstner bed. And then we leave it for a few minutes so it'll be a nice snug fit. I'm coming right down the side here with my beating and parting tool to, to get this round. I'm going right into side grain so it works fairly, uh, fairly easily to, to uh, shape it. It leaves somewhat of a rough edge but we're going to clean that up uh, in just a moment after it's, after it's round. And I use a 3 8 inch spindle gouge, kind of face off the top just a little bit before we start start shaping it. Uh, it you've got to have a design in mind before you uh, start this project. Most any dried wood will work uh, because of the size. You might be able to get it at a local sawmill. Uh, around here you can get poplar and cherry and, and maple and uh, some other sizes. I used the stock I had on hand. So now we're shaping the base. And you want to add just a little bit of flair to it. Uh, so think about your design a little bit and draw you a... Uh, here you can see I can... I'm just knocking off the edges. I've got the tool rotated. And I refer to my template. I, threw about, I drew about three different base designs to, uh, so I could make sure I was happy with one. And now I'm marking where the the uh, design is going to change on the on the base so I come along smoothing as I come down the curve and when I hit that line you'll see I I, I lift the handle and actually go into that line a little bit so I can make my curve a little steeper and then I drop the handle and, and flare it out and then try to make a bit of an OG uh, curve as I shape this around Clean up the end a little bit. Face off that little rough edge at the top uh, and make it slightly concave so when the candlestick fits in there for final gluing, the outside will uh, hide, the, hide the seam. It's 
So again, you can see me changing the direction of the flute a little bit and uh, the handle uh, maneuvering to, to get the flare that I want. Now I come back with a negative rake scraper. I find I had some some slight rough edges. This is a finishing tool, but it does a real good job getting rid of minor uh, tool marks and, and ripples prior to sanding. Uh, I put a fresh burr on it before I before I started. And you can see that the tool is held almost flat. Then I come back, the sanding protocol. I use uh, some sanding lubricant, go through all the grits, use a little uh, axe, uh, uh, sanding abrasive paste, rub it on real good. I probably should have put a coat of uh, lacquer thinner on here first, but I didn't. Uh, and started at a slow speed and then uh, bring up the speed. And that gets rid of those very fine uh, marks. Now I press very gently and then it sort of pop, pop, lo uh, pop <laughs> pops loose, so I set it aside. Now here's the design again. You've got to have a, a storyboard when you get started. Uh, if you don't, you're going to have a hard time coming up with a, a design. So you mark the design after you've turned the, the, uh, your cylinder. Mark the key features. Uh, by doing this and using a storyboard, you can make multiples of this without any, any problem. So I'm rounding over the very top. because the top is essentially a bead for this particular design. Then I'm going to reach for a skew to go ahead and, and make some V grooves for these other features. That's the easiest way to mark them. Uh, and you can see that I go through each one of them, uh, taking very small cuts, maybe a 30 seconds of an inch, uh, on each side, and, and take several successive cuts. And I do this on both sides of, of each feature going a little higher speed here now I come back with my uh, 3 8 inch spindle gouge whatever size is appropriate for you and roll that bead over and you'll notice that I pull the handles as I go down in there so that the uh, bevel is closer to 90 degrees when I get to the bottom Coming right into the edge, rolling it over, coming into the other bead on the other side. Knocking off the edge, and then continuing to work, to work the shape a little bit. If you've gotten this far in video, you must be getting something out of it, so please hit the like button. Thank you very much, and back to the video. After I've got shaped, I go back to sanding. Be sure not to sand off the fine edges. Uh, you, you, it's very easy to, have, to sand away any crisp images, and the crisp images really make it pop. So here's the final, final look. Now we're going to put the insert, uh, tap it in. The 7 8 inch inserts work very well, and they just tap right in. You can get these at a number of sources, including Amazon, as I'll show, and I'll have a link to these. And there's our final one. Now we're going to uh, shift over to a larger one. Uh, th the biggest difference is one of scale and, of course, uh, the design. So I'm doing the cross, cross grain base first. And here's a comparison of the finished ones of the small one on the left and the larger one with a larger blank, uh, thicker base, uh, bigger up, upright. When I drill this, I find it a lot easier to drill this larger one on the uh, lathe. So I put a large tenon on it to hold it. Uh, and then drill that 7 8 inch hole about a half inch, half inch deep. And here's a couple of designs of larger candlesticks that don't have a separate uh, uh, base. In this time of social distancing and self-quarantining, you need to get down in your shop and turn. Y'all stay safe. Come on back, my friends.